If an automatic single swing driveway gate is fitted with a material such as hardwood battens, these add significantly to the weight of the gate. So a well braced metal frame is needed so the gate won't sag. Otherwise it could drag on the driveway and stop working. A common way to do this is to use a cross brace. So any weight applied to the gate won't cause it to sag. But these don't always look that nice. So what else can be done to brace a gate? Without a cross brace, the strength of the frame comes from the corners and stiffness of the rails. As weight is applied to the gate, the rails deform, causing the gate to sag a little. Exaggerated here for demonstration purposes. Doubling the height of the rails reduces the amount they deform by half as much, but at a cost. Increasing wall thickness of the rails has the same effect, but costs even more. What if the same weight is applied to a gate half the width? The rails also deform by half as much. By taking a full width frame and adding a middle style, it is a bit like having two half size frames added together, with the end result still being the rails deforming by half as much and costs less to do. Adding more styles can reduce deformation to the point where in the real world it's much the same as a cross brace, but looks a lot nicer. This is why the traditional style of gate with round vertical tubing requires no cross bracing because each vertical works a bit like a style adding a small amount to the bracing of the gate rather than weighing it down. This is if each tube has at least one tack weld on each side of the tube per rail. A middle rail also adds significantly to the bracing of a gate, particularly if combined with verticals. I made a gate like this that was 4.8 meters wide and 1.8 meters high, and when hung there was no sag whatsoever, even with a 90 kilo person riding on the gate. The same principle works with material that is fitted horizontally to the gate such as aluminium slats. So long as they have at least one tack weld either side of each slat per style, including a middle style. The hinges for a swing gate are also important. If they have slop in them or aren't attached properly, they can also cause a gate to sag. No amount of bracing the gate will fix this. But what will is using hinges with no slop and if the hinges are attached with screws, use countersunk screws. A post that isn't stiff enough can also cause a gate to sag. The gate could be hung from a timber fence post, although unpainted timber outside can bow and twist, which can be prevented if the post is well seasoned and sealed from absorbing water from the ground and the air. Or use a large galvanized steel post for the gate set into the ground by at least 600 millimeters if the ground is firm or more if not. Attaching the fence to the gate post, even a timber paling fence, will brace the post very well, although only with the gate in one position. In this case, the closed position, because it is in line with the fence. But this won't help much when the gate is open. If the gate does sag a little when open, this isn't as noticeable as when it is closed, so long as it doesn't drag on the driveway. This is assuming the driveway is level, of course. If not, this is a topic for a whole nother video.